Papa Shango in the WWF then. Charles Wright's spooky voodoo gimmick didn't go over well with fans back in the early 90s and today the character is used as a prime example of everything that was wrong with cartoony characters during the era. I don't really think it was the Papa Shango character itself that was the problem. I mean, the outfit and the look weren't all that bad, but his segments were so comically bad that Charles just didn't really stand a chance. The WWF decided that Papa Shango would cast spells and put curses on his opponents. Yep, voodoo spells and curses. And guess what? The curses worked, as Mr. Ultimate Warrior himself found out firsthand. I think as wrestling fans, we are open to having some goofy shit happen as long as it's pulled off in a cool way. I mean, look no further than The Undertaker and even The Fiend Bray Wyatt. Everyone loves that guy. When Papa Shango done his voodoo magic, yeah, it would have been enough to turn the channel over. Especially if you had friends over who already questioned why you watch that silly wrestling stuff in the first place. Once again, Larry Sharp's name gets mentioned in a Wrestling Bios video. Charles Wright was trained in Larry's Monster Factory after a few wrestlers noticed him in a bar he was tending. The wrestler said he had a great look and he would make it far in wrestling if he got trained. Larry came recommended and at this point, I'd also tell potential wrestlers to visit the Monster Factory as it's a place that just keeps coming up during research. Anyway, Charles was able to work for the USWA while still training with Sharp, which is a testament to how fast he picked things up. He worked in the USWA as the Soul Taker, being introduced to the company by Larry Sharp himself. He picked up the USWA Unified World Heavyweight Championship in his very first USWA match, defeating Jerry Lawler in his debut, but he only held the title for around a fortnight. During his time with the company, Charles worked against the likes of Steve Austin, Kerry Von Erich, Dustin Rhodes and the Junkyard Dog. It was The Undertaker who put in a good word for Charles with the WWF. Charles was able to come into the company in 1991 as Sir Charles and he had his very first match on the This Tuesday in Texas pay-per-view, however he was featured in a dark match. Of note here is that This Tuesday in Texas actually had 9 dark matches and only 5 main card matches. Charles then worked a few house shows for the WWF before Vince McMahon decided to send him home while the company repackaged his character. Charles said, My problem when Vince hired me is that Vince said, You have the body of a monster, but you have a baby's face, so we're gonna send you home, we're gonna put you on payroll until we come up with something. And then that's when they came up with Papa Shango because Vince said they had to do something with my face. So Charles Wright took some paid leave while the WWF worked out a new gimmick for him. On the February 8th 1992 edition of WWF Superstars, Charles Wright made his return to the WWF as Papa Shango. Shango worked against Dale Wolfe, someone who Charles was already very familiar with due to working against Dale during his days as Sir Charles. As Papa Shango made his way to the ring during his debut, Vince McMahon said on commentary, I don't know if you know much about voodoo or whether you have read about the subject matter, but this man knows a great deal about voodoo. To be honest, when Shango was presented here in his debut, it wasn't really all that ridiculous. I mean, yes, it was corny and all, but he started off here as an imposing and intimidating character. Vince McMahon on the headset was pushing the voodoo shit, and man, it's so funny listening to Vince McMahon trying to create and sell this character on commentary. There are times when commentators do an excellent job of putting talent over and enhancing the televised presentation of a superstar. Look no further than Jim Ross and his excellent work calling Mick Foley and Steve Austin matches. But Vince here is trying to push something on us that we really don't want. Check out the debut yourself, it's available with a quick Google search and you'll know what I mean here. Papa Shango came down to the ring and done his job here. He made quick work of his opponent and looked vicious while doing it. Yet Vince McMahon on commentary seemed to take away from the whole debut. Charles said, 
I had to go to a real dark place to make him so convincing. I used to read books on voodoo. In fact, I built an entire voodoo library. Everything I said in my promos was real and legit. All the props were from voodoo stores. It was totally authentic. The effects guys worked with the staffs and sticks so that they all did something different. I had a bunch of them. Some would shoot sparks, others had smoking lights that came out of them. I was the first wrestler to do the lights out gimmick. Arena owners and building management didn't want to do it in case somebody got hurt. Now, of course, it happens every week, but back then it was a huge deal. Papa Shango would continue to destroy enhancement guys on WWF Superstars and on Wrestling Challenge. The company at one point was prepared to go the whole nine yards with Papa Shango as evidenced by his involvement in the WrestleMania 8 main event. Sid Justice battled Hulk Hogan for the WWF Championship in the main event and Papa Shango was scheduled to run in during the match and break up a pin attempt by Hogan but things didn't quite work out this way. Charles totally missed his cue and he didn't make it to the ring on time to break up the pin attempt. To try and save the angle, Sid kicked out of Hogan's big leg drop and instead, Harvey Whippleman, Sid's manager, jumped on the apron which caused the referee to signal for a DQ. The match was thrown out even before Papa Shango got to the ring. Ultimate Warrior ended up coming out to save Hogan from the beatdown which led to a Warrior Papa Shango feud. Charles said, that finish was not my fault. I was told to go too late and they underestimated the length of the aisle. Even Warrior said later that night that he had to haul serious ass to get out there on cue. Watch his run. He used to run to the ring every night, but never like that. Papa Shango would then feud with the Ultimate Warrior and it was during this time that the voodoo stuff got turned up a notch. On the May 16th 1992 episode of Superstars, Papa Shango put a curse on the Ultimate Warrior after a match. The only defence I have for this is, if you were a young kid watching at the time, then maybe you would have felt some concern for the Warrior, but yeah, that's even stretching it. Papa Shango makes his way to ringside and Warrior, out of nowhere, falls to the floor and holds his stomach, shouting in pain. Papa Shango holds up a skull while pulling some weird faces while commentators are screaming that Papa Shango has just put a curse on the Ultimate Warrior. Warrior is brought backstage where he throws up on doctors while violently shaking his head. It's so fucking ridiculous but surely there had to be a payoff for all of this, right? Well, no, there was no payoff, at least on TV. The summer of 1992 saw Ultimate Warrior feuding with Macho Man Randy Savage, while the Papa Shango angle was moved to the house show loop. Warrior consistently defeated Papa Shango at live events, while on TV, Shango was working once again with job guys. The Warrior vs Shango TV match never happened as Warrior was released from his WWF contract towards the end of 92, meaning this comically bad angle was all for nothing. Towards the end of 1992, Papa Shango began working house shows with Bret Hart, again taking losses, leading up to Saturday night's main event on the 27th of October. Papa Shango got a televised WWF Championship match here against the Hitman, again coming up short. If there's a Papa Shango match you'll want to check out after watching this video, then this would be the one. Bret was so good at getting good matches out of just about anyone. Not saying here that Charles Wright was a bad worker, far from it. The problem was that the perception of Papa Shango as a character was pretty much completely fucked by this point. By 1993, Papa Shango was jobbing to the likes of Crush, Tatanka and The Undertaker on the house show circuit. He did pick up a win on the March 1st episode of Monday Night Raw, defeating enhancement worker Mike Edwards in around two and a half minutes, but two weeks later, he suffered a defeat to Bob Backlund. As the months progressed, Papa Shango was slowly written out of TV shows. 
Charles found himself back in the USWA for a period of time, thanks to the relationship USWA had with the WWF. He defeated Jerry Lawler in Memphis for the USWA Unified Heavyweight title in May, and interestingly, at King of the Ring 1993 in June, Papa Shango defended the USWA title against Owen Hart in a dark match. Charles said that he was not happy holding the USWA title during this time period, as he felt it was done only to sell to a predominantly African American wrestling audience. He ended up dropping the title to Jerry Lawler a few weeks after the Owen Hart King of the Ring match, and he never worked for the USWA again. The Papa Shango character made its last televised appearance on the July 7th episode of Wrestling Challenge where he defeated Chaz Ware, yes, Marsh of the Headbangers. He stayed employed with the WWF until October of 1993, ending the character's run with a string of house show losses to Owen Hart and Bob Backlund. Charles Wright wouldn't resurface in the World Wrestling Federation until January of 95, where he debuted a new gimmick, Kama, defeating Matt Hardy during his new character debut. Papa Shango will always be remembered for the ridiculous voodoo curses and spells, and really, the WWF have no one to blame but themselves for that. On paper, the idea was no more out there than a dead man who can rise from the grave after casket matches and buried alive matches, but the problem came during the execution of these voodoo inspired segments. Give Charles Wright credit though, he done his homework here in terms of researching his gimmick and tried to make the best of a bad situation. Having Papa Shango come to the ring and perform voodoo spells on his opponents that actually had an effect was definitely silly but you have to remember too that the product was made for kids back then. Papa Shango will always be memorable, even for spending very little time in the WWF, but it was Charles Wright's portrayal as the Godfather that eventually won him over with wrestling fans across the world.